On a recent radio appearance, I found that the interviewer was absolutely relentless. He was determined, determined to dig in and learn more about the dirty, filthy, nasty underbelly of the competitive crokinole scene. I did not take the bait. I assured him there is no controversy. There is no drama. But apparently I was wrong. We recently posted a match between a player that goes by the handle, Rotten Ronnie Langell, as he went head to head against one half of the Canadian cue balls, Jeremy Tracy. There was a shot made late in that match that sent our comment section into absolute mayhem. It was madness, pandemonium. As Jason Troublemaker Malloy chimed in suggesting that an illegal shot had taken place. That should be illegal, he said. There should be a penalty, he stated. Thus, forever changing his name to Jason Double Trouble Malloy. People, people are gonna get that I was, that I was joking, right? <laughs> Let's hope. In this video, we are going to take an up close, slow motion look at a fascinating, absolutely fascinating crokinole scenario. Jeremy Tracy here of Tracy Crokinole Boards. If you enjoy this video, find it interesting and entertaining, please give us a like, a comment, a share, subscribe for future videos coming out. In particular, comment, I'd really love to hear your comments on this unique crokinole situation. But the, the shot that Jason was commenting on is when uh, you place your shooter so closely behind either one of your buttons or an opponent's button that when you shoot, they both travel across. He was suggesting it should be a double hit and therefore illegal. Now in this video, we're going to dig into some things. The first thing we're going to look at is I'll share a little bit behind the scenes. Uh, Mac and I put on our scientist caps as best we could and we ran some experiments to see if we could boil down and see exactly what happens when you, when you make a shot like that. The second thing we're going to look at is the NCA, the official NCA rules as they're written now and how it applies to this situation. Now the third thing we're going to dig into is, in my opinion or in our opinion, what, what rule change, if any, should be made to cover this scenario. So let's get after it. As I said, you're definitely invited to share your comments down below, but before you do that, I wanna make it very, very clear that I did not write the rules. I am not responsible for the rules as they sit now, and more importantly, I do not have the power to change these rules. I may have the ear of the people who have the power to change this rule, and I would also suggest that when and if there ever does come a day to that rule change takes place, that if there are valid comments, valid considerations in these comments below, they very well could be taken into consideration. So your thoughts could help shape or shape a rule change or a lack thereof. So please do share your thoughts down below. I'm super curious to see what comes up. So the experiment that we ran was to determine whether or not this is a double hit and therefore we could take that information into deciding how we think this should be handled. So one theory that we had was that it is a double hit, meaning the disc leaves the finger, hits either your button or the opponent's button, it really doesn't matter, hits a button that's already in play, comes back, hits your finger again, and that's what causes it to continue. Our second theory was that the button never loses contact with the shooting finger, that it's, it's still in contact and then just pushing both buttons across the board, which change it, it's not a double hit. My quantitative, my math specialist, yeah, I'm sure of the math. In that case, it would not be a double hit. So a, a couple things that we did to experiment. The first one was, just out of curiosity, was experimented shooting across the board with a different amount of space between the shooter and the button that was already in play. And what we found when we did that was that the closer together they were, like let's say they're touching, when you'd shoot them, they would both travel together. The bigger the gap was in between them, the more they separated as they went across the board. Does, it, does that make sense? Hopefully the B-roll video will, will make more sense of that. But that was just a curiosity thing and it, the physics of that, although neither of us have a major in physics, it kind of added up and supported some of what we saw in our other experiments. So the next thing that we did was we took our camera equipment, we put a camera directly over top, nice and close inside, and we said, you know what, we can take this slow motion. I mean, look out ESPN, you've been put on notice, Tracy Boards is coming after you with our ability to do slow motion. 
What we found with that was our cameras that we use, they record at 60 frames per second. With that, when we took it and slowed it down, everything was so blurry. My finger became blurry, the button became blurry, and it was absolutely impossible for us to determine with any level of certainty whether it was theory one, that it was a double hit, or whether it was theory two, that it stayed as a push. So then what we used, we stepped up. We stepped up by four times because we took Mac's iPhone, which has the ability to record at 240 frames per second. So at that point, when we were looking at that footage in slow motion and slowing it down to the best that we could determine with our naked eye and the equipment that we had, we strongly feel that it was not a double hit, that it does not lose contact and then recontact the finger, that it does stay in contact and push all the way through that shot. Again, as best we could determine. So with 60 frames per second and then even with 240 frames per second, we could not determine with 100% certainty which was which. And the other consideration was it was just me shooting. There was no, there's no control here and different people shooting in different ways, it may, it may have a different result. But as best we could determine, what was happening is it is just a push across the board. So the second thing we want to cover in this video is the rule as it is written in the current NCA rules. And this is what you will find, rule 7G. Once a player has his finger and disc in a set position in preparation for a shot, and the disc leaves his, her finger, a shot is judged to have taken place. As much as I've scoured the rules and looked over them and read them and considered them in different ways, there is no rule about a double hit. There is also no rule that clearly states how, how far after a button crosses the line, the finger is allowed to still be in contact. There is no written rule about that. The other thing that there is not a rule about in a situation that I've seen uh, many, many times in in competitive crokinole is a player makes a shot a button whether it's whether it's their button or the opponent's button really doesn't matter a button comes back and hits their finger while it's still in that shooting position there is no official rule it is extremely understood that what I've seen every player do is that it hits their finger and they say oh that was headed off and they just automatically grab it and knock it off I have heard discussion about changing that rule but there is no actual rule about it now we did a video a while ago about different ways to flick your disc and one of the things I said new people like to do is put their finger on top and slide it across and I said one of the reasons I don't like that is because I feel like their finger is staying in contact with the button for too long. But the truth is, there is no rule about that. There's no rule that says your finger can't be, you know, touching more than an inch or half an inch. Like, how would that be judged? And really, if you want to be an absolute, I don't know what, there is no rule that states that you couldn't take your finger and push a button all the way into the center hole. There is no rule against that, but I guarantee you, you'll get booed out of any NCA arena on earth if you try to pull something like that. This is where the common sense and, and uh, just sportsmanship of the game comes into play. So this brings us full circle. We've talked about the experiment. We've talked about the rule as it sits right now. Now you are going to get to hear my opinion of what rule change should take place. And my answer is none. I don't feel that there is any need to make a rule change. If anything, it should be written in that this shot is legal and valid. That's my opinion. I absolutely invite you to disagree with that. And I will also add, if anyone is sitting there thinking, okay, this is the rule change, this is the rule that should be in place, because here's a, a possibility of something that someone could suggest, because I've heard this said, and our experiments would, would suggest this is true, that if there is less than the, the width of a button in between your shooter and the button that's already in play, this is what will happen. They will continue across the board. So someone might be sitting there thinking, well, that's simple. Just make a rule that you cannot have your button sitting that close to a button that's already, your shooter sitting that close to a button that's already in play. But that isn't easy to determine. So if there is a rule change to be suggested and put forth, here is what I'd like you to consider. 
I'd like it to keep the same spirit of so many of the other rules that are in this game. Example one, first example. It used to be a rule that when you were shooting, you had to, your, your shooter had to be touching the shooting line and it could not be more than halfway over, 50% of the way over a quadrant line. But how do we determine that? It's 51%, it's 49%. It, it's just, it opens up, it's too gray. We cannot clearly determine exactly where it sits. So they've changed the rule and now it's that it has to be touching the shooting line and either just the shooting line within your quadrant or it needs to be touching the shooting line and the quadrant line. I said it here, it's either touching that quadrant line or it's not. There's no argument, there's no debate about this 50%. It's made super clear. Another example, the damage rule. There are people that don't agree with the damage rule. Here's what I love about the damage rule. You and I could sit across the board from each other and we could absolutely easily argue about where the buttons were before the damage happened. I could say, no, no, it was sitting here. And you go, no, no, it needs to be a half a centimeter closer to the post. We could argue that until the cows come home. We cannot argue about where they ended up. In my, in my mind, that's why the rule is written the way that it is. The same as the spinning disc rule. If a disc spins on its own power, and I've seen this happen dozens of times, it spins in such a way that it crosses over the outer boundary line and comes back in. As long as it does it of its own power and it didn't hit anything that was out of bounds, it is determined deemed to still be in play. Again, we could sit across the table and scream at each other that it crossed that line or it didn't, but we cannot argue about where it ended up. In my opinion, that is why the rule is written the way that it is. So if there is a rule change to be suggested and put forth, I would really, really, really love to see it keep that same spirit. The last thing we want is to have a rule that is, that is debatable that people could sit and argue about that could bring a match or even worse a tournament to a grinding halt oh no oh no oh no i'm lost where's the line it just went away dude what do i do help we'll be stuck here forever trying to determine whether whether there was three quarters of a disc space in between the shooter and the button that's currently in place or it was a full disc in between. It, whatever goes forward needs to be simple and clear and be able to be quickly determined. So please throw your comments and your thoughts down below. And do you wanna know one of the things that I absolutely love about this Corcoran community? I don't need to add in a disclaimer or a, a recommendation or a request that says, please be polite and please be civil. I'm not worried about it because anyone who comes in and actually acts like a douche, not just in fun, actually is a jerk. They're not a real croconoler, so I'm not worried about that. Let's have a friendly debate and see what boils to the surface. So in that comment section, why don't you go ahead and have fun debating this rule about the greatest game on earth. They're not real croconolers. No. They're Russian bots. Yeah. <laughs> that the shooter leaves the finger, hits the hits whichever button it hits. Like what I say, let me start. Wow. <laughs> Are you done now? On the rules this should, uh, how the rules should, let's read it. <laughs> Those douchey Russian bots.